Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to Ten Pines Bluff. So, this is somewhere I've not really built before. It's one of the few places. But uh, it's turned out to be bigger than I sort of realised, which has been interesting. So, quite a chunky video today, but I've got a, a few things I want to cover, and there's quite a bit in, so... We'll jump in in just a moment, but uh, first things first, my premise for this build, as uh, usual, has to do with the location of the place. So most of the terrain up here in the Northern Commonwealth is pretty rugged, so anybody making their way towards the Commonwealth from the north, as we know there are people up that way, is likely to come down either the coastline or the railway tracks just there. So my premise for that, with this being up on a hill as well, was that uh, the Minutemen would probably want some form of uh, outpost and guard post here to make sure no threats slip by unnoticed. So we're going to turn this place basically into a fort of sorts, a fairly sizeable one. So we're working on towers and walls today first and foremost. So we're going to start up in this corner and use this as a uh, sort of guide point for where the lines are going to run for the walls. The technique I'm using here is um, sort of a combination of things I've done before and some stuff I've not done in quite a while. It makes for a very defensible position. So, relatively basic design with this tower we're starting off with, but it does the job quite nicely. It provides a, a place to stand and defend from, at least on this corner. We'll have a few more around the place as well. So, a couple of other things I wanted to mention, seeing as uh, we're here, is that uh, there's a few things been going on on my end lately that I've been working on making changes with. But, uh, I've alluded to on various occasions that are starting to come together now, so hopefully that will leave me with considerably more time now to focus on the channel, which will be absolutely brilliant. So hopefully we'll have more regular uploads and more regular streams as well, which is something I've been looking forward to getting into place for a while. So... To that end, the first one of which will be uh, Monday night, tomorrow night, which is the 4th of June, which will be streaming at about 7pm GMT, so that's 8pm in Central Europe. So a little bit early for those of you in the US, I know, but uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. Hopefully you guys will either be able to catch the end of it, or uh, at the very least the video when it goes up afterwards. So that's something to look out for. If you haven't already hit the notification bell, you should do so. And then you'll get notified whenever I uh, go live, upload, that sort of thing. So the other big thing is the big piece of news this week. As I'm sure you're well aware, Bethesda has announced a new Fallout game. And for those of you who want to have a look a bit more detail in... At in a bit more detail even, the trailer. I've put a video up, there should be a link appearing somewhere about now having a, a look at what we can determine from that. So do take a moment to have a look at that and you can get a few ideas of my thoughts on the subject. Since I recorded that, however, there have been a few leaks and various other things, bits of information coming out about what this uh, new Fallout 76 might entail. And uh, as you can imagine, it's got very, very mixed reactions. The big piece of news seems to be that the game's almost certainly going to be online which a lot of people are concerned that means they can have multiplayer stuff down their throat. But to be honest, my thoughts on that is I don't think it hugely likely. I think the game will almost certainly have multiplayer, but I think it's going to be more of a case of the option to squad up with your friends if you want to and tackle the PvE that way. Possibly having things like raids in it that are geared towards doing it as part of a squad, but... If you don't particularly want to play multiplayer, I can't see Bethesda of all the companies out there turning around and forcing you to do it. It's just not what people would come to them for, so they'd be crazy to do that, and I think they know better, so... That's my opinion. That's a couple of people who even suggested that uh, they might be trying to cash in on the Battle Royale thing, but uh, I reckon there's not a chance in hell of that, to be honest. Which is probably the right call. So obviously that'll be... Uh, Revealed in more detail at E3 on Sunday, so I'll uh, have my responses up to that, but as I say, I suspect it's going to be um, a requirement to be online, but that's nothing particularly new. And then with the option to do multiplayer, maybe you'll run into other players in-world doing their own thing, but we'll see. I think it'll be uh, a lot of fun. Settlement building looks like it'll be a massive part of it, which is great for me. 
So, and presumably you guys as well if you're watching this video. So that should be very, very cool. So, yeah, I think uh, a lot of the concerns are somewhat uh, overdone and unnecessary. But, as I say, take a look at that video if you want to see a bit more about the trailer and see what I think about it and so on. And we'll see what happens on Sunday. So, jumping back to what we're doing here. We've got this guard post coming together. We've got the uh, front row of the battlements sort of behind us here. That will uh, lead us on towards the next tower. As this one's a fairly basic design. So I want people to be able to look out of it. I've not used uh, walls on it. We had a little bit of issue with the ground in this settlement, which I think is probably down to uh, scrap that settlement. Possibly, maybe slightly down to uh, over overgrowth, but I'm not 100% sure. More likely scrap the settlement. So that's where we're using the conduit here to get a bit of extra reach, because the pillar just wouldn't sink in very cooperatively any closer to the building. For the most part, I didn't have too much trouble with it. Which was, uh, actually, I was here when I uh, elected to start a new save because I just couldn't sink anything anywhere, so... We'll uh, work around it and make it work. Okay, so we're back over to the other end now. And we're going to start off the line following this edge of the settlement area, the build area. So, in order to get the height right, I'm using these double-stacked... Uh, foundations, which work reasonably well, although I should probably have rotated them uh, 90 degrees to make them lean over a little bit less, but there we go. It's much easier than just using a concrete pillar to line this up with, because you've got a bigger object to get a, a better idea of the perspective on it. So, as you can see here, lining this up is much, much easier this way. And it also means I can look along the edge of the foundation to see whether or not I've got the lines right for the edge of the build area. So we'll nudge that into place. We've got it at the right height with the uh, stairs there. It's a little bit too far over and it's going to cut out of the build area. So we'll make a quick adjustment. Get things lined up a little bit better. Doing it this way makes it a lot easier to turn the corners as well. Because we can put a, a tower there at that sort of place. On the corners rather. And you can uh, more easily make it go whichever direction you like from there. Drop that stair back in. Take a look. Yep, just a little bit in, and we're following the line a lot better there, so that should work. Obviously, I don't want a tower here right next to the other one, so we'll pull this out. Once we've put this line in, and use it as a guideline. And we get to the corner halfway along here. So we're going to repeat that build process with the two foundations, and actually put a tower here, so we can turn that corner. And line this edge up with the new direction here, so I can just snap on and set off in the right direction. So with that in place, I'm using the large floors here because it's just that much easier to see where I'm going to place this tower in this corner, which is the really big one, so we'll have a look at this in a lot more detail in a minute. There we go. So snapping that top foundation straight onto the end, which uh, I tried messing around with it, but this is by far and away the easiest way of doing it. And then just position the lower one underneath and just raise it up so it comes into contact with the legs at the bottom. I did try the opposite. Like taking the board out and then just sinking it down, but with everything underneath it just ended up being uh, out of sync a little bit, so this works much better. However, the idea from here, particularly on this corner, is to be able to overlook the railway line, which is a little bit further away than ideal, but I've got to work with the build area as is. So we're going to lift it up a little bit further. We actually end up getting right to the top of the upper level of the build area, the height limit. So, no roof on this upper level, but it does give us a bit more of a commanding view. I'll snap a few floors in. I'm using warehouse pieces for this upper floor for the simple reason that I wanted to do something a little different. This, to be exact. I've done stairs that many times, I thought I'll use the lifts I've never done, because I've never actually done that in a video, which I don't think so anyway. I've used them briefly before, but they're a touch on the limited side, but... It works, so it's something a little different. This uh, four-story one here, unfortunately, is a little too tall. It won't snap onto the side, as, uh, it would then clip through the ground. So we'll have to use a three-story and put a little ramp in. That's what we're doing here. Unfortunately, these half-quarter-sized uh, 
scaffolding pieces, that's the word, right there in front of me, don't actually snap into place on the sides, unfortunately, so just have to do it by eye. The full-size ones do, but that just didn't look the part and took up too much room, so there we go. It'll need a little bit of adjustment later, but gives us the right idea. So with this particular build, it's a little bit awkward in places. For the most part, you can snap warehouse or greenhouse or barn pieces onto the lift there. But, uh, and onto obviously the floor pieces from the warehouse as well. But because of the position, it's a little bit temperamental because I'm using uh, sort of half size pieces. So for this, we'll snap where we can, mix and match those textures. And then we'll group select in other bits and pieces to fill the gaps that are left over. Which works quite well in a sense because it adds to the uh, sort of more mishmashed, mixed texture, improvised look of the place. So works well from that point of view. Back up the top, we'll stick some railings on. Don't want anybody falling off. It's a bit too uniform, so we'll mix it up. Bang, bang, bang. Nice and easy. Should provide a little bit of cover for anybody trying to fire all the way up here, which would not be easy to begin with. Stick the railing on there. Trees are a little bit in the way, but mm, there we go. I'm in two minds at the moment as to whether or not I want to uh, remove the greenery mod overgrowth. We'll see what happens. I know there's mixed feelings on it. So here, I was having a hard time snapping anything onto the outside, largely because there's an entrance to the lift there. So, we've got a couple of warehouse foundations just snapped on the side here. Stairs so we can get up there. I've used these because, unlike most of the other foundations, as you can see here, you can actually sink the concrete pillar into these ones. So it provides you with a, a surface to work from, assuming you can get them into place anyway. So that means I can do this much more easily. It's not a technique I use often, but it is handy to have in the bag of tricks if you need it. And there we go. Now that's actually the same height as everything else, roughly. So here's another example where I just plain couldn't get things to snap on the sides, so... With a little bit of persuasion, we managed to get these broken end pieces to fit on. And then we'll plug the gaps in just a moment. So I ended up focusing on this tower quite a lot more than I thought I would, but it ended up being slightly more complex than the rest of the build, and most of the techniques in here then adapt to the rest of the build as well, so... For example here, we want to group select this in on a level with the floor, which is why we're using the ashtray as an anchor point, because it snaps to the floor rather than sinking. Obviously you need the bottom of the ashtray level with the bottom of the piece you want to position, in this case the railing. So it's kind of awkward with the lumpy unlevel ground down there, but if it's too high you'll see the thing jump up anyway. In this case we've got it right, so in we go. Obviously if it's too low then the thing will wind up floating. So here is a very handy technique, both for building the tower and doing the walls. Um, with it being so high up, I swap out a few of the shack foundations for warehouse uh, shack floors rather, for warehouse floors, like this, because the warehouse and barn walls will actually snap underneath the floors, which the wooden ones obviously won't. So it makes it a lot easier when we come to do the walls, because there's sections in place already. You can, if you like, just use those uh, warehouse pieces instead of the uh, shack ones altogether, but I think it wind up with a bit of a uniform, very, very flat front edge to the wall. Which you'll then have to spend ages texturing, but we'll kind of end up doing that anyway, so swings around about, I suppose. So here we've got a piece that just won't snap in, even with uh, the extra walls there to use as an anchor point. So we shall group select this one in, use a different piece for a bit of variety. And we'll grab that, and just sink it in. It's a very, very narrow gap here, which I think was part of the problem. Probably on a slight angle, actually, with the uh, collision issue, but... For some reason, it's quite willing to go through the scaffolding, but not through anything else. So, with a little bit of persuasion... There we go. Eventually. <laughs> nice. So, I'm not going to close that gap off, because it will be inside the wall when I've actually built it. 
But the others will just group select bits and pieces in and plug the gaps, so you'll see in the tour. As I say, there's a lot to cram into this video, so... Trying to avoid uh, too much repetition and overdoing it, whilst making sure you can see everything you need to see to be able to do the job as well. So, we're going to use this corner junk fence to wrap the legs of the foundation that's in the corner there. So it speeds the whole procedure up and it looks pretty good as well. However, we have a slight issue here. With the rug being on the inside there, it will hit the legs of the foundation and basically defeat the whole point of using the rug glitch. So we're going to use the larger one on top here, because locking onto that small one will then bypass the collision on the large one as well. And it's much easier to place this big old wall on. So, there we go. We have our mini chain of rugs, I suppose. We have the pillar in next to it. I'm actually going to make a slight adjustment, because I fiddled with this for quite a long time before I was actually able to get it to work. Unfortunately, we're right up against the edge of the build area, or will be in a moment. So, space is something of an issue. So, this way we can have the rug stick out much less, put the pillar much closer to the wall, and we can fit it in this tiny little gap here. Now it's just a case of lining it up. Usually, I would say it's easier to stand inside and do this. But uh, in this particular instance, it didn't want to cooperate. Not least of all because we're under a foundation, the legs getting in the way, pillar starts getting detected, yada yada yada. It's a pain. It's one thing I have enjoyed about the little bit of building in Kona Exiles I've done. There we go, little adjustment that looks the part. That, uh, to coin Todd Howard's phrase, it just works. <laughs> Certainly more than it does in Fallout, anyway. So hopefully that's something we can have to look forward to in Fallout 76 as well. The uh, building might be a little bit more polished, hopefully. Now they've got a little bit more practice and they've uh, had a heck of a lot of YouTube content to look at to see what does and doesn't work. Incidentally, if you haven't had a look at my uh, Conan Exiles build, you totally should check it out. In fact, I shall probably be doing more of that game on the stream, which will be tomorrow for me. If it's not tomorrow, then it's either today or you've missed it. <laughs> so, we're trying to get the gate in place here. I'm basically just going to show you this front wall, rather than doing the whole thing, because it's repetitive and takes ages. So, The gate's a little bit too small for the height of the walkway above, so... Hence the foundation pieces. Needs a little bit of adjustment to get the lines right. The ground was being a little awkward here as well. This end of the settlement just seems to be a pain, to be honest. But we'll eventually manage to get this to snap back in. There we go. I've actually made the decision, I think, probably, maybe, that I'm going to uh, put foundations of wooden floors through the whole settlement, sort of in between the buildings. I'll do that as, as I go along, obviously. Just because it will give the place a more permanent look, and it's something I've not done before. So, should be cool. So, when it comes to building these walls and filling them in, gaps like that one... The easiest way to do it is to start at the top and work down. Because you can simply group select in walls like this. Actually, this particular piece is obstinate, and this is about the only occasion it worked properly. But uh, if you group select the top layer in, you can then rug glitch the gaps at the bottom and fill them up much more easily, and you don't have the collision issue. Whereas if you try and do it the other way around, you're trying to reach over the top of the pieces you've already put in, and it's a total nightmare. So Start from the top and work down. So we've got a small gap here to fill in. Use this half wall. Oh so versatile half wall. There we go. Another thing to bear in mind, if you push these walls up too high, you can find it very difficult to snap railings onto the top of the walkway. So obviously the collision gets in the way. So it might even be worth going around and putting railings on the upper level first and then you can come back and tweak and adjust later when you've done the outer walls. You don't have to worry about the collision so much. Although I'm not quite sure how that might affect group selecting everything in, so... Not having done it. <laughs> Who knows. Worth a shot there, I think. So, rug and pillar for this one. And we'll uh, see what I was just talking about in action. Hop on over here, and just fill the gap, nice and easy. 
And the overlap here provides a nice bit of texture as well. Breaks up the uniformity of it all. We end up with a very, very ramshackle looking wall, but it's very, very secure at the same time with this sticking technique. Big drawback, of course, is that it's very, very time consuming just doing this sort of wall. Actually, I only did three sides of the four. Took far too many hours. But it does do the job and look the part. And as I say, I wanted to do something I hadn't done too much of recently. All a variation on a theme, of course, but... The plug we get with this wall with tyres on it. It's a lot thicker, this particular piece, so it's something to bear in mind. It doesn't leave you with as much room behind. Now it's floating a little bit there, so I'll nudge it down a little bit. And there we go. So, one thing I didn't do anywhere near often enough was uh, using these sort of prefab pieces of Aslam's from his uh, junk wall workshop junk wall pack, I believe it's called. Um, and they're really handy if you can find the rug glitch point, which is slightly awkward, and the bigger ones are even more difficult. But it does mean you can just glitch in one go much larger sections of the wall and then just fill any gaps that are left over. So that does speed the procedure up a bit. I kind of wish I'd remembered that a little bit more when I was actually doing this the first time. We'll head around to this end. With it being so large, it's much easier to just position the pillar on the outside and line it up from the top. If you have the pillar on the inside, then it tries to jump up on top of the uh, shack walkway here that we've got. One thing to bear in mind is where it sticks up like this, you will find putting railings on very, very difficult. So I think I, uh, I think I stood something up behind it actually. I forget now. We'll have a look in the tour in a minute. These double height junk walls are also particularly useful. Firstly, because with the ground being so uneven in places, this wall is extremely high, so. It does speed the procedure up a little bit if you only have to use one piece instead of two in a few places. The other very useful thing about these is if you use them reversed every so often on the inside, it makes both sides look considerably more supported. Again, I, with the, this particular technique, it, the ideal really is to go around both the outside and the inside, which is part of the reason it takes so long. Here I was having a few issues with uh, positioning this in. The ground was being a bit obstinate in this case. So we're using the rug on the corner of the wall rather than in the middle. And using the taller pillar so I can sink it a little further. So we'll get that positioned up. See, it's just been that little bit temperamental there. Line it up with the front edge of the walkway there. Drop it down. And we'll nudge it up and use the top of it as a bit of a barricade as well. There we go. And then just plug the gaps. So, the finished product. As I say, you've got the general idea now, so this should be uh, easy enough to work with. You can do your own thing with it. We've got another lift tower here. As I say, I wanted to do something a little different. Not really much point for the smaller one in the corner there. You can see I've started putting the foundations in as well. I'll leave it as is for the moment, because having them already in place and then trying to build afterwards will be a nightmare. There we go. So we've got a few bits and pieces here. Those um, pallets on the side, these boxes on the side. There's a few uh, rotated doors and such like as well, the desk here. They're all uh, added by a mod I picked up recently, which is going to elude me now. Um, it's by Toys Out of the Pram. This is... Um, posts and supports mod but it's got boards and junk walls and stuff like that in it as well and it adds to the number of options we've got and it's very very cool i've used it quite a lot in this build actually i'll point out a few places as we go around and that board there for example is one of them I'll look at this tower here a few more bits and pieces just along the edge here i haven't done a right lot of decoration here largely because um it was taking so long so I will come back and do more as uh, the build develops. Top of the lift there. Although I've got attacks turned off at the moment, this is one of the major areas they do spawn from, so if you've still got them active, it's good to have a nice strong position up here to 
defend the settlement from. So they'll be putting turrets in at some point as well. I haven't quite decided how I'll tackle that. So this little tower here, you can see the support posts there. In the past I've used wire fence posts, the double height ones, but those particular ones are out of Toys Out of the Prams mod again. Which I really must add to my mod list. Um, uh, a lot thicker, there's a lot more options of them as well. And they look uh, much more substantial. So from up here we've got a much better view of the railway tracks, which uh, as I said before is the main route down from the north, other than the coastline, which is considerably more dangerous. So we can uh, fire down on any threats from up here if we need to. Have a look at this lower level. This is the main goal is to defend the railway line. This particular corner has to have uh, the most fortification and the most uh, firing positions. Drop down the lift. There we go. We'll head out and take a look around the uh, inside of the walls now. See, so same technique as the outside. And I've used the reverse junk fences, as I said, just to provide a little bit more support, make the thing look like it's not about to fall down. That back end of the settlement, as you'll see again in just a moment, I haven't done anything with yet, because I think next time I'm probably going to repair that house and put some kind of command facility or something like that in there. And I'll build that into the back wall, so... I'll left the gap ready for that. I'll take a quick look at this, and that basically covers everything for this particular little build. I do hope you enjoyed the video, a bit longer and uh, more rambly than usual, if that's possible. But if you did enjoy it, you know what to do by now. If you'd like to support the channel more directly, do consider becoming a sponsor on YouTube Gaming. You'll find all the information down in the description. But thank you very much, and I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon.